Well, namaste again and welcome to another Sunday service here at the Holy Coptic Church of the Black Messiah. My name is Pastor Dr. Cuban W. Ines III, also known as Kahun Anku Sarah. As always, we like to begin by greeting our listening congregation as well as those who may be watching this service. We encourage you to come down to the Holy Coptic Church of the Black Messiah any Sunday at 9 a.m. for our Sunday service or any Wednesday at 7 p.m. for our True Light Fellowship and Bible Study. We are located at number 72 Meadow Street, which is right opposite Enia Street, and we encourage you to come and learn your true religious identity. And for those of you who did make it on this beautiful football Sunday, <laughs> The beginning of the football season. Yes, that's how some people mark of the year. <laughs> we are very grateful that you are here. We say namaste. 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 Which simply means I bow to the divinity in each and every one of you. And we say shalom rio. Shalom rio. Which means peaceful uprising or peaceful morning, or peaceful new day. Today we want to carry you a little further into what some may refer to as the mysteries of atonism within the true records of the original Coptic Church of the Black Messiah. You see, for too long, we as a people have been feeding off of the watered down, bleached out versions of what is being called the scriptures today. Whether it was the Alexandrian Greek Orthodox scriptures, whether it was the Constantinian uh, uh, Greco-Roman Orthodox scriptures, whether it was the King James Anglicanized scriptures, we've been feeding off of a watered down, bleached out, misinformed, misinterpreted version of the scriptures for so long that we as a people have emulated these scriptures by being out of place, by being watered down, and by even bleaching ourselves from time to time. Amor? Amor. So today we want to take you to another level. We normally, and we still will, would have read from Papyrus 1, which are the beginning of the original books in the Bible, and this Papyrus 1 would have taken us through books 14, 14 of the books of the original books of the Bible, which we affectionately call the OBOB. -OB. But these books, which mention the book of creation and before, and when I speak to you this morning, I want some participation now, okay? We want you all to work with us, all right? Because we can't just expect for this spirit to move through us. This ain't no spooky spirit. No. We're talking about a spirit that inside of all of us that we walk in here with, all right? right? So we can have some fun with this this morning, right? Yeah. So when I, say, when I say creation and before, when I say the book of creation and before, I just want you to say creation and before. When I say the book of the beginnings, I just want you to say the beginnings. Let's try it, right? The book of the creation and before. Creation and before. The book of the beginnings. The book of the beginnings. The book of the story of Lucifer. The story of Lucifer. The book of the wars which took place in the heavens. Wars which took place in the heavens. The book of the journey of the great crystal city raised Banjet. The journey of the great crystal city raised Banjet. The book of the origin of the earth's moon. The origin of the earth's moon. The book of the birth and growth of this universe. Birth and growth of this universe. The book of the birth of life forms on earth. The book of the process of evolution. The book of the divine principles of Ma'at. The book of the separation of the firmaments. The book of the separation of the firmaments. The book of the Tamaray and Adama. The book of the Carbonites of the Phoenician stock of Hindus. The book of the graph station of the Adamson of Europa. The of the of these 14 books represent the first papyrus of the original books of the Bible, which represent the celestial records. Because all our lives we've read in the beginning. Everybody say, in the beginning. In the beginning. Now, is in the beginning at the beginning or in the beginning? In the beginning. Now, come on, now, we've been asking this question for years and years and years, right? Right, right, uh, Pastor Ashid? Show her, bro. Do you understand? So, the thing is this. We are now at a point in our day and time where the society has failed us. 
It continues to fail us. Governments have failed us. It fails us. Right. That's right. Schools have failed us. Talk to me now. I'm on. You understand? You talk to me. The schools have failed us. Our families have failed us. My Lord, we fail ourselves. I'm yeah. on. I'm on. I'm on. You understand what I'm saying? And so today, we're going to move further into the original book to the Bible, whereby we move into the Papyrus 2, which has a lot in it, but we are going to begin at Barashif. Everybody say Barashif. Barashif. Everybody say ba ba re re sheaf sheaf. And this ba re sheaf represents the original Genesis. Everybody say original Genesis. Original Genesis. And that original Genesis is the gene Isis. Say gene Isis. Gene Isis. And that gene Isis is a portion of a scroll known as the Shubaka Stone. Everybody say Shubaka Stone. Shubaka Stone. What is Shubaka Scroll? Shubaka Scroll. Now, Shubaka Scroll is not some scroll that we mythologically dreamed up and we expect you to believe that it is this. The Shubaka Stone, which actually was inscribed or, 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 or told by a pope or baba known as Shubaka to his scribes, to inscribe it into a stone is a stone that exists today in the British Museum. That's right. The British Museum. I didn't say we don't know where it is. I didn't say we believe it's someplace somewhere. We have pictures of it. You can go to the London if you had an opportunity today and go to the British Museum and look at the Shabaka Stone. And the Shabaka Stone is a portion of the angelic records which holds another portion known as the Tuare. Everybody say Tuare. Tuare. I can need somebody. Everybody got their notes. Everybody got their pen and paper. Who do I have pen and paper today? It's me. <laughs> Those who are listening and watching, Brother Freddie is blind. So he, he's messed with us every week. <laughs> but, but, but it would be nice if I, if I had somebody come up here and uh, just, just write some words as I as I, I give you the spelling, because I know I'm the best at spelling sometimes either. But but you wanna come here, come on. Right? And so the first thing I need you to write is, and let me just before we erase this, today's sermon is entitled Genesis Revisited Through African Eyes. Because we gotta see things through the African eyes. And so the first thing I want you to write is Chewbacca, S H U. Just erase the middle so you can write it big. Come on, this sounds like some old time This is some old time religion. <laughs> you understand? Know they say, give me that old time religion. So we gotta give you that old time religion. The old time religion taking us back to the quote. Shoe hyphen. B A. Y'all ready for this old time religion? Yeah. 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 Alright, and so the shoe box the store. I need you to take your notes because they ask you when you leave this church, but what y'all talk about Sunday? It is watch us on Facebook. Yeah. They know we talk about Genesis through the eyes of the Africans, but they scared of themselves. They yeah. scared of Africa, you see? Because they're scared of themselves. And so at the end of the day now, we understand that the Shoebacker stone, the Shoebacker stone is one or a portion of the angelic records. Out of the Shubaka stone, you have the <coughs> Tuare. Spell Tuare. T U A. Hyphen. R E. The Tuare. Alright? And the Tuare is the original Torah. Is the original Tanakh because this Tuare represents Tua, which is yes or an agreement with Re. Everybody say Tua, Re. And this Tuare represents that we agree with Ane Re. Everybody say that I agree, I agree. with Ane Re. Amun? Amun. And so what has happened then is that we for too long have been fed an inaccurate doctrine that causes us to live a life that ultimately is inaccurate. Inaccurate. Been, that's right. We've been found wanting. I'm on? I'm on. And so, Pastor Sheen, I want you to help me to read from the Barashith. We're in scroll three, falsely called chapter three. And we're going to start right at verse one. Pastor Sheen, help me up. And also, you must overstand. You must overstand. You must overstand. I, 
I don't I don't be interrupting from time to time. Do what you got to do. You got to wait with me, right? Because we've been understanding for too long. You understand what I'm saying? All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Pastor Sheen. That we must remember always that from 1,000, 100,000 to 70,000 years with the expulsion on arrival of another group of fallen angelic hosts on Tar Earth, they, as Lucif <coughs> Luciferians, also along with some of their black-skinned, Hindu-looking children who spread mischief and shed blood, where were cast but chased across the Saudu. So, the Sauda. Everybody Sauda. say Sauda. Sauda. So what I want you to do right now is go into your Bibles. It really ain't your Bible. Right? And look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. So just say, go into King James Bible. Right, go into King James Bible. It ain't his Bible either. His version. Yeah, his version. Yeah. Genesis chapter 3. And I want all of us to read Genesis 3 and 1. Yes? Mitch when, you, when you got it, say I got it. Yes. All right, let's begin. No, no, no. Oh, Lord, no, no, no. Come on, no, that's a black church. Oh, yeah. It's a black church. It's a black church. We have to fit the Russians. Oh, I said the King James Version. He said the King James Version. Yeah. No, so we we we, we got we got to make sure we read this thing with some light because the spirit got to move through us today. We got to become one soul in different bodies, right? Let's read it together. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree. Of the garden. So this is the premises, or the premise rather, of the sermon today. There's this serpent, there's this woman, and there's a question that's being asked. Yes. But they leave us there in the King James Version or translation of the scriptures, and we're left with a lot to think about. We're left with a lot to question. Outside of what this woman, the Kaba, who they say is Eve, was given to question. And so as Pastor Sheen read, you're talking a hundred thousand. 70,000 years ago at the beginning of this particular chapter which is going to move us into a period of time of 49 to 50,000 years because we're dealing with the fact that each day was 7,000 years. 7,000 years? 7,000 years. And 7,000 years because one day unto the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is this one day. Come on now, you got to work with me, right? And so it's talking about this period of 100,000 to 70,000 years, where it wasn't just some snake in no garden. Huh? Y'all ever seen a talking snake? I mean, we have seen some talking snakes. They didn't call themselves snakes. But it's talking about the expulsion and the arrival of this of another group of fallen angelic hosts. We, we, we jumping in in the middle of the story. Some angelic hosts been coming and going and been ki being kicked out and keep coming back in and being kicked out and coming back in and kicked out and coming back in. And this group of beings were called the Luciferian. Everybody say Luciferian. Luciferian. This is where the Lucifer comes from. Mm -hmm. And this Luciferian, along with some of their black-skinned Hindu-looking children. So remember, we're talking about the black devil at this point in time. Now, we ain't going to get into the black devil today, but we got some black devils amongst us, right? Not in this Kanisa, I hope not, but on this, definitely in this country, right? Definitely on this planet. Yeah, I'm on. But what were they causing? They was causing what? Mischief. And what else? And bloodshed. And bloodshed. Mischief and bloodshed. You know those people who, 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 who's caused mischief and bloodshed? My Lord. And so this mischief and bloodshed caused them to be chased across the Sauda. Everybody say the Sauda. And the Sauda represented the outer fields that did become scorched as the hot and burning sands, or Aswad Arabia. Everybody say Aswad? Aswad. 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 Arabia. Arabia. Now what's interesting is that this area, which was another desert area. Well, when we say desert, what are we talking about? What's a desert? Dry. Dry. It's dry. Desolate. And it, it's desolate. It's deserted. That's the word desert come from. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? And so there was a second, and you learn about the first one, 
or uh, uh, after this period of time in a second, but they're, they're, this, this Sauda or this desert area, they chased them across. Who chased them across? The angelic. The guardian angelic. Those our ancestors. We was tired of them. Because they was causing what? Mischief, Mischief and what? Unbloodshed. So they still amongst us today, because they still causing what? Mischief. Unbloodshed. We can look at it too, too African. Everybody say African African. And these are the things that we've been learning within the critical theology from Barsesh. The critical theology from Barsesh. Our guardian angelic host in this day and time that's guiding us, bringing us the scriptures so that we can guide you, our brothers and sisters, you who are of the angelic bloodline, you who have the essence of the Most High and Nehre inside of you, so that we can help to bring balance to this world. Say critical theology. Critical because theology. Because we have to critically look at the theology of the Greeks and the Romans and anybody else who stands before us to say that they bring in a message from God. No, we're going to critically look at you. We have to critically see and understand what was going on. Right. So this desert area remained after the second meteorite shower. Mm -hmm. Oh. So there was more than one meteorite shower. Mm -hmm. But where was the first meteorite shower? The first meteorite shower is inside Papyrus 1. You understand? So we're moving on to the second meteorite shower. And this second meteorite shower caused there to be deserts again. This region was such that the desert area was void of any permanent humanoid occupation outside of the Nile River Valley, with the exception of a few nomadic Bedouin tribes. So what is happening here? There's a meteorite shower which causes a huge shift on the planet, but there's this area known as the Nile River Valley. Everybody say the Nile River Valley. Nile River Valley. Everybody say the Amazon River Valley. Amazon River Everybody say the Mississippi River Valley. Mississippi River Valley. Everybody say the Indus River Valley. Indus River Valley. Everybody say the Tigris and Euphrates River Valley. The Tigris and Euphrates River Valley. River valleys are areas where we as Nubian Melanite people live and thrive and we yes. kept records. That's right. They always right. tell us that we have some type of oral scripture as if we didn't write. And that's why it's important that you bring your notes, that you come prepared because you should take notes. What's the word I want? I want a big word. <laughs> Give me a big one. I, I don't even know what a seed just sleep means, but that's all I want you to seed just sleep. <laughs> Take some notes. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Verse 2. Now let me explain something now. This, when we say verse 2, we ain't saying verse 2 of Genesis 2. We're saying verse 2 within Barashi, which is still Genesis 3, verse 1 in your Bible. You understand? Because what did they do? They were taking verses. These scrolls were hundreds of feet long. And they were taking these scrolls and truncating them. Truncating is another big word which we had chopped down. They chopped down these verses to 20 words. You understand? When they were over 20 verses. One verse in the Bible today that people who are called the King James or any other Bible was actually 20, some, some cases 30 something verses for what you call one verse today. Okay. Wait a minute. Go ahead, brother. I had a good. Yeah, let me say it again. Let me, let me say it again. Let me say it again. 30 verses in your original books of the Bible became one verse. That's right. Now, if I was paying you, yeah, see, because verses you, you might not understand verses. But you understand money. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Now, if I was taking. $30 and making it $1 in your paycheck. Would you feel that? Yes. Would you? You almost sound like that. Nah, this is the You almost sound like that. Don't hear me. You're ready to stop this war, man. I mean, you're a revolution. I don't even know what's going on. You sound like If I take $30, huh? If I, if, if I look at a ratio of 1 to 30 now, come on. Yeah? And for every 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 thirty dollars, every every dollar should have been thirty dollars. Uh, My lord, your paycheck should be looking sweet, eh? Yes. Uh -huh. Now if they took that from you, would that change your way of living? Yes. 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 Drastically, don't just say yes, say drastically yes. Drastically. Come on now. So we go to verse two within the bar sheet, which is still Genesis three and one, it says, and then from seventy thousand to sixty three thousand years. Everybody say that seventy thousand to sixty three thousand years. They say massive downpours of rain. 
Yeah. So we ain't talking about what we just call it spraying. No, no Jersey it's spraying. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, behemoths. If we get a little bit of rain on us, we set. But let's not type of rain. What is page off? <laughs> you know, when you're catching the rain, you gotta do dry off and go, yeah. go sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Massive downpours of rain that happened them today in Saudi Arabia. This is why we gotta get the internet, which we can talk about after the service today, so we can have our projector and shoot. The actual sudden rains that's happening in Saudi Arabia today, carrying cars down the street. Because what happens in the desert? When there's heavy, heavy rain and no trees. Nothing to hold it back. Nothing to hold it back. So there's flash flood and flash flood and flash flood. And so this is what was going on. These massive downpours of rain began sweeping into the desert regions, most especially the Nile River Valley. The Nile River Valley. The Nile River Valley, transforming that specific region into a habitable area. So this region now we can live in. Everybody say habitable. Habitable. An area where we could come together and live and create positive habits amongst ourselves. I'm on? I'm on. All right, so this habitable, habitable area, all right, which was quickly settled thereafter by both the Naturu Yellowhin. Everybody say Naturu? Naturu. Yellowhin. Yellowhin. Not him, hin. Hin. The original sound is hin, not him. That's right. Naturu Yellowhin. That's right. Naturu Yellowhin and their students and children who came forth from the inner cities, caverns, lagoons, Caves and waterfalls. Inner cities, let me ask you, inner cities, caverns, lagoons, caves, caves, and waterfalls. And waterfalls. So what did this represent? This represented that we as a people had the ability to survive on this planet every time there was a meteorite crash. Indeed. Every time that there was no more light that could be seen from the sun, we would take refuge in these inner cities. Are there inner cities in the planet? Yes. yes, there are inner cities. Are there cabins in the planet? Yes. yes. Are there lagoons in the planet? Yes. When we say lagoons, we mean you could literally dive under and come up and there's a huge air bubble of sorts That's right. underneath where people could live for an extended period of time. These lagoons and caves, we ain't talking about like cave mommy drawn on the wall. We talking about in the earth. Amun? Amun. And so these Naturi Elohim and their students what were they doing? <clears throat> they came forth from these inner cities and then from 63,000 to 56,000 years ago, it continued raining. Vegetation growth and animal migrations led to well-established settlements. Everybody say well-established. Well-established. Amongst the humanoid population on top earth, including the breeding of domesticated, say domesticated. Domesticated. See, it's important that we understand what this means because the first domesticated is who? The woman. The woman is the first domesticator. The woman is the one, the first scientist. You're the first scientist. That's right. This, this patriarchal doctrine of King James is telling you, the woman, that you came out of a man and that he was the one who had to dress the garden and that you were the one who was just supposed to be helping him. When the reality is you were the one domesticating things. Domesticating means you started the farms. That's right. You corralled the animals and made sure that we had meat. You made sure that we had fruits. You made sure that we had herbs. You were the original herbologist. Oh Amun? Amun. Amun. By, by way of the teachings of René Nutet. Everybody say René Nutet. René Nutet. And so these domesticated livestock, such as sheep and goat, in this region were able to survive. Verse 4, which is still Genesis 3, verse 1. <laughs> which is still Genesis 3, verse 1. Everybody say Genesis 3, verse 1. Genesis 3, verse 1. They say verse 4 in the bottom sheep. And then, and then, and next, from 56,000 to 50,000 years ago, conditions were such that the rainy seasons all but disappeared in the area outside of Gan Edan. Everybody say Gan Edan. Gan Edan. And this Gan Edan, oh my, oh my, oh my. Slacking, man. Slacking. You're fired. You're fired. Oh, you got another one? Gan, G A N, colon. E hyphen D E N. All right? And so this Gan Eden, all right, wherein the seed of the fallen angelic host in the line of Uruk. Everybody say Uruk. Uruk. Right? U, the letter U hyphen R U K. All right? And so this Gan Eden, no A, no, no A, sorry. 
G G A N G A N. This guy, E Don. Let's raise, let's raise him right over. Don E Don. All right, this Don E Don. All right, was what is being referenced or called Eden in the King James version of the Bible today. All right. And there were these seed of fallen angelicals in the land of Uruk. Say Uruk. Uruk. And this Uruk was Nud. Say Nud. Nud. Say Nud. Nud. This was a Nudist colony. That's what they make in our planet today. That's what they make in our country today. You got women, because they buying cereal, they walking around in the food store in pajamas. You understand? You, 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 you trying to figure out why we looking at you, and we trying to figure out why you letting us look at you. Because we can see everything, right? And the men are in a position whereby we can strengthen the woman. We can tell the woman, my sister, you look good, but mine cover it up. Um, Is that what we're doing? We ain't doing that, right? Boy. <laughs> Sweet thing. The snake. Ah, uh, the snake. The, the snake. Ah. Yeah, my brother, you, you hit the head on the head, right? And so, and so the reality then is, that what was happening? These seed of the fallen angelicals in Uruk did experience massive dehydration. Massive de So we ain't talking about oh, I ain't nothing to drink in an hour. We talking about I ain't nothing to drink in days. I ain't nothing to drink in weeks and months. We trying to figure out where did the water go. So that caused drought, that caused famine, which caused them to curse the natural yellow hen. Curse the not the They cursed our ancestors. They cursed our ancestors. Curse our ancestors. Curse the not the Curse the And were jealous of and hated the new Adana group as the seasonal rains had ended and the desert conditions returned to the land of Uruk, bringing famine and death. Say famine and death. Famine and death. Yeah, brother Mike. Come, I want you over here. Come, let's go. <laughs> Step forward and move up that quick. Everybody gonna get a little chance to be up on this board. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I'm on. I'm on. Your turn now, brother Mike. Thank you, Sister Zaria. Yes. And so we move into verse five. Now, verse five in the Bible tree is still what? Chapter one. Genesis one, three, three and one. And one. It says, "Be made aware, O humanity, for so it was that around fifty thousand years ago, after the natural real Elohim." had done much work and charting in order to create a flourishing oasis environment on the surface of tar earth, that another sudden rainy season occurred over the Sahara. Everybody say Sahara. Sahara. Right, S-A hyphen H-A hyphen R-A. Say Sahara. Sahara. And this Sahara sounds like what? Sahara. Sahara. You understand? So what was happening here? In this Sahara Desert region, there was sudden, a sudden rainy season, which further transformed the region into a habitable land. So they will tell us in histor historical documents, anthropologists, etc., they will teach us that the Sahara at one point was what? Was a it, was it was a forest. It was habitable. Amun? And this was happening 50,000 years ago. What is happening at this point in time with 50,000 years ago? Think. What's happening? What's happening to the planet? It's shifting. It's shifting. There's a polar shift. And that's the same day and time that we're in right now. This is another period of a polar shift. Come on. Yeah. So verse 6. Verse 6 in the Bible sheet is still what? Genesis 3. Genesis 3 and 1. And this opened the door for the new Adam. Everybody say new Adam. New Adam. The new Ottoman groups of Kushites and Kushites. 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 So K U W S H K U W S H hyphen I T E S I like I and I yes K U W S H hyphen I T E S Kushites and then I want you to write Howellites H A hyphen W I L A Okay hyphen H I T E S and that's Howellites. Everybody say Howellites. Howellites. Amun. 
And then I want you to write Atum, A-T-U-M. A-T-U-M hyphen I-T-E-S. Everybody say Atumites. Atumites. And then I want you to write Kuthites. C-U-T-H C-U-T-H hyphen I-T-E-S. So you have the Kushites, say Kushites, Howellites, Atomites, and Kuthites. Alright, and there in those, thank you, Brother Mike, those, just start right there. We can still use you some more. <laughs> These tribes were those who were living on the actual, well, four of those actual rivers that we called off earlier. The White Nile, the Blue Nile, the Tigris, and the Euphrates rivers. They were living in these areas where there was water because where there's water there is life, life. 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 all right and so at this point in time now who's guiding them who's guiding them to move the natural who should be guiding us we have to figure it out that's our problem right but they were told by the natural him that the time and conditions were right for them to give reverence to and for the successful planning and construction of the universe city University. University. A what, brother? A university. A university. What's a university? Mm -hmm. That sounds like what? A university. university. Do we have a university here? Yeah. Not yet. Then they say by November, the college of the Bahamas is going to become a what? University. University of the Bahamas. Thank God. So this was a university of Akit Aten. All right. So right, universe. U N I. V E R S E hyphen city C I T Y and I want you to write Aket A hyphen K H E T. This was the universe city or garden of Aket Aten. Right? Aten A hyphen T E N. University or the Garden of Akit Aten. The Gan Idan, if you wrote earlier. So we ain't talking about no simple garden, are we? No, we're not. We're talking about a manicured area That's right. which houses a universe. Come on. A universe. A universe. Universe. City. City. A city where we came to learn about the Universe. I'm on. And the universe is inside of us. I'm on. And the universe is without us. I'm on. As above, so below, as below, so above. So we learn the sciences. That's right. And this is what was happening in Genesis 3. You know, they got us thinking that we was walking through the bush. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like there was just some garden and we were just walking around naked. Just being us, just being naked. You know what I'm saying? Leaves. Yeah, just not eating fruit. Not okay. eating that fruit. Right? No, that, that's not what was going on. Right. Alright? And so this Gani Dan is what they were told now that they could give reverence to, right? And, and they could basically uh, begin to construct this university, as well as have their progeny or their children admitted into it for proper educational instruction. So we're talking education now. This is what was going on. Your Bible is teaching you uh, the King James Bible. Everybody say the King James Bible. The King James Bible. Bible. Say the myth made by the, the myth made Bible. Bible. A myth made by Bill. A myth, myth made by, by Bill. Bill. Who's Bill? William. William. <laughs> William who? Shakespeare. We can toss another sermon. You understand what I'm saying? I'm on. I'm on. All right. So, verse seven of the Bible sheet is still what? Genesis 3 and 4. I'm on. This new condition is a new condition. New, new condition. condition. And change of climate which occurred around 50,000 years ago turned the remainder of the Sahara desert area into a savanna type environment within about 500 years. It was a 500 year period. Both rain and sun and what is going off and all the things that happened for life to be able to exist within 500 years this area became a savanna type environment, which means that you had shrubs, right? It goes on to say in verse 8 of the Barashit, which is still what? Genesis. Genesis. And at that time, 
within other areas of Tamare. Everybody say Tamare. Tamare. Which is ancient Africa because we ain't just talking about the Africa that you see today. The Africa that you see today is a colonized continent. That's right. It is a product of the Berlin Conference that happened in the late 1800s. Mm -hmm. So don't let people point to that and ask you if you're crazy if you want to go back to that. Because mm -hmm. Africa is wherever Africans are. That's right. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. You understand? You before to call this the Bahamas, but this is 90% African. I'm on. So this is Africa just as much as the continent is Africa. If we build using the original documents, the original scriptures, and the original realities, the same things that we had to build on the continent. Yes, we're making a connection to the continent. Yes, we're going to be back and forth from here to the continent. But we were all over this planet. That's right. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. The vegetation. Verse 8, rather. And at that time, within other areas of Tamare, where the desert region subsided, there were also semi-arid conditions which allowed for grasses and shrubs to grow with some trees sprouting in valleys and near groundwater sources. Verse 9, which is still what? Genesis. 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 The vegetation and small sporadic rain pools attracted animals well adapted to dry conditions such as elephants, say elephants, elephants. say rhinos, rhinos. say hippos, hippos. say crocodiles. crocodiles, as well as those that could be used as food sources such as giraffes, giraffes. Zebra. zebras, all with more than 30 species of fish, some which were six feet long. You see you got some of them around here, right? Whereby the city, Adam, was not only erected there, because now you have other cities popping up, Right? The city Adam was not only erected there, but also flourished. And there was also found there in this area lush vegetation, trees and permanent freshwater lakes, and even some large rivers which existed for thousands of years. Say thousands of years. Thousands of years. Verse 10, which is still what? Genesis 3, verse 1. See how they watered down these scriptures? Yeah. All of this is Genesis 3, verse 1. And they only got 38 words in that. Come on, tell me now, sister. How much words? 38. 38 words, oh Lord. Verse 10 says, and for this reason, the Luciferian, we just learned about the Luciferian. Luciferian are those who do cause what? And what else? You still got some of them around, right? Yeah. Oh Lord, too bad, but yes, we do. And for this reason, the Luciferian, being possessed of the adverse forces, of Apep, say Apep. 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 Say Zuen. Zuen. Apep. A-P-E-P. A-P-E-P. -P. And then put a colon. And Zuen. Z-U hyphen E-N. Okay? We're led to cross the hot and burning desert sands of the Sauda. Right? Sauda, because I don't think we wrote that earlier. S-A-W hyphen D E H S A W hyphen D E H and this Sauda they were they were led what led them their desires man they wanted what we had they was coming across the hands because they was coming to take some stuff that's what they good at huh taking some stuff good at that one they good at not having resources and coming to take people resources you understand as they desired to conquer the inhabitants of the great Nile River Valley. Say the great, great. Nile, River Nile River Valley. Verse 11, the battle sheet, which is still what? Genesis 3 and 1. And thus during the seven days of 7,000 years. How much days? Seven, seven days, days of 7,000 7, years. Which are what the how many years? 49,000 years. Many environmental events occurred which held a direct influence on those who lived both within the universe city, say universe city, universe city. or enclosed garden, or enclosed garden. of Aket, Aten, say Aten, say Eden, Eden. say Eden. Eden. Say, Eden. Eden, say Aten, this is what you was talking about, Gan Eden. So this was this was this was causing uh, uh, obviously an effect on the universe city, as well as those areas outside of its gates. So were there gates? Then we have gates. When you go to the University of the Bahamas, as it will be called in, in, in November, do they have gates? Yes. Yes. Do they have security on the gates? Yes. 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 Oh, now you're starting to understand why they put cherubs at the East Gate. Uh -huh. Yes, it's your security. That's right. Amun? Amun. Come out of the spook world. Say, come out of the spook world. Come out of the spook world. We done with the spook world. We done with the spook world. We done with the spook world. Amun, at least she is. I don't know the rest of yours. <laughs> 
All right? Yeah, yeah, bro. I'm yeah. telling you, verse 12, which is still what? Genesis 3 and 1. Now, when Akit attend the Gan Eden within the Ganawa. Everybody say Ganawa. Ganawa. G A. G A. N A. M A. W A. W A. This Ganawa is the enclosed garden that is Tamare, ancient Africa. All right? So, we're not just talking about one area, we're talking about the continent. I'm on an area within the continent. All right? And you're going to learn about. Ganawa and Ganawa, which we won't get into at this point in time, right? But the point we're trying to we're trying to open your eyes to understand that we're not just talking about one little area. Because if they get you fixated on one little area, I mean they can take the rest. That's right. Mm -hmm. You understand? So they ain't taking the rest from us. They ain't taking the rest I'm on. from us. I'm on. I'm on. All right. And so what was happening here? How we how we start to learn about Akit Aten? All right. So we in verse 12, we start from the beginning now. In Akit Aten, the Gan Eden within Ganawa, that is Tamare, there were amongst the Nataru Elohim different sacred schools and other universities. So we ain't talking about a university, we talking about a place that houses universities. That's right. Oh, wow. Wow. And it says what? It housed other universities or universe cities, each with their own respective mascot. Do we have that today? Yes. yes. You got... FSU and they have a what? Indian. You got Florida, what? Gators. Yeah. You got, give me some other names, some universities. Give me some of your universities. Tuskegee, give me a tiger. Oh, we got a tiger. Huh? We got a tiger, right, 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 brother Steven? Yeah? Anyone else? Lockwood Lions. The Lockwood Lions. So you got lions, you got tigers, you got gators. Sound like a university. Because these animals don't come out of Europe. No. No, they don't. So why are they using animals that come out of Africa and act like they're European universities? They took it from come on now. Come on. Let's work with me now. All right? So they each had their respective mascot. And one of these universities or universe cities called the School of Thought or Tahuti. Everybody say Tahuti. Tahuti. T-A-H-U-T-I. Yeah. Sorry, there should be a hyphen. Yeah, put the hyphens between. Hyphen between ta, and t. Falsely called thoth. Say thoth. 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 All right. So this is what the Greeks began to call it after they stepped in. And as its mascot, the binu. Everybody say binu. Binu. B i n. B i n. Hyphen. Hyphen. N u. N u. All right. The African ibis. We got all these black ibis flying around now. We see them a lot now. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. It is the higher graduate initiatory teachings. Say higher, higher. higher. Graduate. graduate initiatory, initiatory. Teachings. teachings. So this idea of school and university didn't come from the Greeks and the Romans. <clears throat> no. This is something that we had amongst our people that are called African today from thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. Amon? Amon. So the higher schools were those who had the mascot of the Binu, the African Ibis. Yes? And while the peacock, everybody say peacock? P-E-A-C-O-C-K. P-E-A-C-O-C-K. The peacock or the feathered serpent. The feathered serpent. The peacock. Was the mascot of the underground. P-E-A-C-O-C-K. Right? So you had the Ibis and you had the Peacock. You had the graduate program and you had the undergrad program. Mm -hmm. Now watch what's happening because remember now in the King James Version, the Myth Made Bible, we are learning about this serpent that comes into the garden. So is he really coming into a garden? He's coming into a university. Right. He's finding his way onto the campus. He's seeking by security. Yeah. You understand? Let's watch what happens now. Y'all with me? Yeah. yeah. And she goes, Come on now. <laughs> All right. So the feathered serpent was the mascots of the underground. Verse thirteen, which is still what? Genesis three and one. Oh my Lord, so they water us down. And this is important because there was one such undergrad who attended this university whose name was Nakash. Uh -oh. Nakash. Nakash. N-A. N-A. Hyphen. Hyphen. K-H. K-H. A-S-H. Nakash. Nakash. 
the diviner who master the art of whispering words. Of whispering words of divination, being a direct descendant of the constellation of the serpent or dragon, Dragos or Dracos. You understand? So when they talk about the chambers of the south, this is where his genetics come from. Amun. And he was a humanoid serpent man whose genetic spiritual beliefs was that of the Aryan Hinduism. The Aryan Hinduism. The Aryan Hinduism. This is who was amongst us in our schools. You understand? We allowed him there at this point in time. He didn't just sneak in. We allowed him there, which is which we're going to learn uh, a few verses down, right? But what is it saying about him? And, through, and though he was not of the pure Nubian melanin-like seed, he was allowed like certain other qualified beings. So you got to be qualified. So you can't just get into the garden. You got to be qualified. You got to write your application. You got to make sure your assay straight. You got to make sure when you interview that you impress them in the interview. You got to make sure you're in on time. You got to be qualified. You can't just march into heaven singing. Right. No, you don't. Come on now. You need some qualifications. Qualifications. Mm. You understand? Critical theology. You understand? This is what Barsash is teaching us in the critical theology. Amun? Amun. And so what's going on? He was allowed because of his qualifications into this universe city with other qualified beings of his genetic line before him to seek admittance to study within Akit Aten, the Gan Idan within Tamare, which is ancient Africa, so that while he studied his nature, and while he studied, his nature would also be able to be observed in hopes of coming up with a way by which to reform he and his kind. So why are he studying what we giving him? We studying him. Because we trying to figure out how we can fix this. Because they always causing mischief and what? Mischief. Have we fixed it yet? No. I don't think they can be reformed, people. No. No. I don't know if they can be reformed. We ain't reached the white line yet. We ain't reached the white line yet. You understand what I'm saying? Come on. Amun. Verse 14, which is still what? Genesis 3 and 1. This humanoid serpent man, Nakash, had a humanoid appearance, yet was reptilian in heritage, with melanin recessive skin. Oh. What does this mean? This means that he had vitiligo. And the way vitiligo works is when we say recessive melanin, it doesn't mean he had no melanin. It's just like a receding hairline. Right. <laughs> Your hairline may be receding, but you still have. Yeah. yeah. I mean, are you losing it though? Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with this melanin. So he had spot patches of, of white on his body. As we see people today with mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And yet, he was allowed to learn by reading from the Emerald Tablets of Tahuti. Say the Emerald Tablets. The Emerald Tablets. Of Tahuti. Of Tahuti. A portion of the Akashu. Everybody right? Say Akashu. Akashu. A, you can start erasing now. They should have that written now. A, hyphen. K A hyphen S H U the Akashu records these emerald tablets of Tahuti, a portion of the Akashu records which sat beneath the sacred Banyan tree. Everybody say Banyan tree. Everybody say Bonsai tree. Everybody say Baobab tree. Baobab tree. These trees, based on the environment that they were in, were called different names. And this sacred banyan tree, also called Sajarotal, everybody say Sajarotal? Sajarotal. Yakin. Yakin. That's S A J A R A T U L. S A J A R A T U L. And Yakin. Yakin is Y A hyphen Q I N. Y A hyphen Q I N. Sajarata Yakin, also known as the Tree of Tahuti. The Tree of Tahuti. He was allowed to read a portion of this wherein he read the prophecies of the ancients which spoke of the fall of one of the students within the outer mysteries. Let me just say this. This Banyan tree or this Sajarata Yakin or this Tree of Tahuti or in certain parts on the continent, we learn of the Baobab tree. All right, and this baobab tree, they're huge trees. The, the, the trunk of the tree is as wide as this building. And even wider. And you can literally hollow out the tree trunk and put, they have temples inside of them. Right. Now in these baobab trees, they also have what's called a 
the bow constrictor. constrictor. Right. Right. This is where the bow constrictor comes from, so the snake in the tree. You understand? But these bow constrictors were 60, 50 feet long, and they weighed five, 600 pounds. And what they would do is wait for you to go to sleep near the tree because it's, you know, the cool of the day. It's nice and cool. And while you sleep under that tree, they fall on you. Come on, you said, this way they get the devil started. This way they get the devil started. I was waiting to figure out who was to see it. Yeah, this snake in the tree. You understand? And they crush you and they eat you. And so we told our children, stay away from that tree. You know, there's a snake in that tree. That's right. And anything we didn't want them to touch, we like it under that tree. Yep. Which included rapids. Yep. But this Nakash was allowed to read from a portion of the Emerald Tablet of Tahuti. Alright? And he learned in these records of the prophecies of the ancients which spoke of the fall of one of the students within the outer mysteries of the school of the natural Elohim due to an interference with the replenishment and reconstruction process which was to take place by way of the female tribal leaders and priestesses headed by one called Nakeba, everybody say Nakeba, and the male tribal rulers and priests headed by one called Zakur, everybody say Zakur. Zakur. This is in the myth made Bible, but they didn't put it in the English. It's under male and female. Male and female created Evam. Male Zakur, female Nakeba. Amun? So there was a replenishment taking place. And there was going to be somebody who was going to interfere with that replenishment. Verse 15, which is still what? Yes. Yet Nakash had no idea that this prophecy which he learned of was actually concerning himself. Say himself. Yes. Being an Indo-Aryan of the direct genetics of the Luciferian reptilians. Thus, his nature being unbalanced led to a point whereby, or wherein Nakash plotted within himself as how to enchant these priestesses and priests in hopes of ruling a successor and caretaker of Ta'ur, most especially <laughs> Akit Aten the Gan Eden, as well as Ganawa. Now that's right, Ganawa. G-A hyphen N-A hyphen W-A. The first one shouldn't have had hyphen. I don't know if he did or not. But Ganawa doesn't have hyphen. This one does. Good. This one has hyphens. Yes? And that represents all of the African continent. Because what you call the Middle East today and big portions of India, all of that was considered the continent. And that's what this is talking about. He wanted to rule all of that. That's mentioned in the book of Esther and in the book of Genesis. Right? As far as that land. Alright? So they always going to come in and control and take over. Alright? in order to control all of its people and its resources. Verse 16, which is still what? Yes. Come on now, let's, let's be almost there. This humanoid reptilian man or serpent man, Nakash, was not of those who are allowed to reside permanently within Akit Aten or Gan Eden, but instead was of those humanoids with reptilian minds of self-aggrandizement who are also extremely intelligent beings from the Saula. Now, if they were intelligent, did they have their own schools, I wonder? Mm -hmm. They didn't have no, no schools? Who thinks they had their own schools? Who said, they, they, who said they had no They just a bunch of devils. Well, let's see. Fair question, right? Mm -hmm. Fair question? Yes. Verse 17, which is still what? Yes. And so it was that his intelligence was highly respected due to his mastery and the grades which he received in the Asrama. A.S. Hyphen R A hyphen M A. These are the Sanskrit schools of the South. The ashrama. This is where the ashrams come from. The Hindus worshiping ashrams. Mm. Amun? Amun. During his studies, to the point that he was allowed to enroll and attend this university within Ganawa Tamare. So around the world. Once you reach the highest level of learning and understanding or understanding in your country, and you seek admittance into one of the 24 sacred universities in Gan Idan or Ganawa. So after he had gone as far as he could go in his country, then they said, you must now seek further education within Africa, within Tamare, which is why he enrolled 
and then was allowed to study as we studied him. Amen? Amen. Verse 18, which is still what? Yes. Thus, by way of the education which this Indo Aryan serpent man received within the university and garden of Akit Aten, Gan Idan, he Nakash learned of the serpent knowledge called the doctrine of snakes and trees. A doctrine of snakes and trees. Oh, now, the doctrine of snakes and trees is found in the first papyrus in the 12th book of the Tamarain Adama, and it speaks about this doctrine. Again, of not just snakes and trees, but these humanoid serpents and these trees that were actually books and information and kanisa and universities, Amun? Amun. which allowed him to become the most manipulative, sensible, prudent, shrewd, and sly, crafty yet subtle of all the humanoid, beast-minded beings of the Saudam. He was the most subtle of his own people. That's right. Who is about enough? Because he's watching it. Because we know it's next. Come on. This area called Uruk, where those of the first group of fallen angels called Nephilim came to also repopulate once again. So they were living in this area that today you call India. Right? Verse 19, which is still what? Genesis And so manipulative, crafty, and subtle was Nakash as a beast-minded serpent upon the Saura, that he devised within himself a way by which to stop the successful replenishment of Tar Earth through the female tribal leaders and priestesses headed by and called, headed by one called Nekeba, which means she who is the best of examples, and male tribal rulers and priests headed by one called Zakar, he with the best of memory. Verse 20, which is still what? Genesis 3. So what is Nakash doing now? He's finding a way to do what? Devise a plan for the he won't mess this, this, this university up. He won't mess this plan up of a new Adam being created. Verse 20. And for this plan to work, he would have to symbolically be able to kill two birds with one stone. Thus, Nakash decided that in order for his plans to work, he would have to first go to the female tribal leaders and priestesses. <laughs> Headed by one called Nakeba. She who was the best of examples, as they were the younger of the two sets, they being 18 years old. Wow. They're what? Freshmen. Yeah. <laughs> I can talk to the freshman fights, because the freshmen don't know what's going on. Right. Right. Huh? Because the car is an upperclassman. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know how things go. Right? But I can talk to these freshmen, 18 years of age, and had just arrived to Akit Aten, Ghani then, to begin their studies. Thus they were naive. Say naive. Naive. Say na. Na. Eve. Eve. Uh, uh, I hear you, come on. I hear you hear? Yeah, yeah. They were naive or less aware concerning the presence of their being mentally unbalanced upperclassmen in their midst. Something which Nakash had every intention of manipulating. Verse 21, which is still what? Genesis 21. Now Nakash by his very name was also one who practiced divination or a diviner or, or spellcaster. Therein he was eternally moved from within by the adverse forces of Apep Zuen, whose spiritual essence is impure ether. Impure ether. Impure ether. I am P U R E hyphen ether. E T H E R. As they in this new life cycle of Tar Earth at that time wanted to rule and dominate all inhabitants, lands, and resources. So when you see things happening today in the media, and you think it's just one talking head making noise, it ain't just one talking head. You're talking about impure ether that's doing what? Speaking to their children. Right. Speaking to their children. Not just one man. Don't get caught up in just looking at one man as a talking head. Impure ether is moving through the blood of these beings. Amun? Amun. So this impure ether as they in this new cycle on Tar Earth at that time wanted to rule and dominate all inhabitants, lands, and resources. They felt this way as they were not a part of original creation. They knew they were not a part. Say original creation. Original creation. Which was performed by the Nataru Yelohen. Nataru Yelohen. By way of the forces of who he. Say who he. The creative force and source of divine will power. Through the utilization of pure living ether. Say pure living ether. Pure living ether. Yes? 
but were instead of those surviving humanoid races which were born, fought, or uh, made out of the powers of impure ether whose essence is decay and inevitable death. They understood that they were not a part of original creation. They understood that there was something that they didn't have that those who they were amongst had. Verse 22, which is still what? Genesis. Genesis. We're about to wrap up. It says, Thus Nakash, being an upperclassman within the university and garden of Akit Aten, Ghani Den, came across a situation where the main instructor or principal teacher within the female branch named Thukia. Say Thukia. Thukia. T H U hyphen K I hyphen A K H. And Thukia, one as beautiful as a peacock's feather. So what was on my squad? Peacock. peacock. Remember the Venu and the peacock? All right. She was distracted due to her own physical looks becoming less alluring to herself as a natural result of getting older. And due to this vanity which she was caught up in or caught up by, she was late to her attendance of the orientation ceremonies for the entry level initiation of these new students. So Thukiak is late. Thukiak is in the mirror fixing her face. <laughs> Thukiak is trying to figure out what's happening. And she's late to the orientation. Verse 23, which is still what? Genesis 3 and 1. Thus Nakash took her absence to his advantage, wherein he snuck by security into the main female building department and eventually into her office, where he put on her robe and the serpent mascot head of Renenu Tet. So at this point, he's wearing the serpent of Renenu Tet. Renenu Tet is the sacred primordial name which holds the key to the bloodline and seed of the woman. And so the head teacher of the females wearing this serpent mascot, Nakash understood that he could wear this mascot and do what? Deceive. Oh. And deceive those who thought it was Thukia. The sacred mask of all the head female instructors is what he put on. By placing on this, verse 24, by placing on this mascot head, he was able to disguise himself as the first cross-dressing transvestite man which would lead to others through time and age becoming transgender males and females as a distraction called originally the Hijras. Say Hijras. H-I-J-R-A-S. And so we see whereby the serpent has sneaked into this university, or he's in the university, but he's sneaking in to a class and pretending to be the teacher so that he can begin to disrupt the replenishment process of the new Adama. And this is what the Barashif is explaining outside of what the myth-made Bible is telling us, which is there, it was just a snake, and the snake was in a tree, and the snake was talking to Eve. Well, it wasn't that the snake was talking to Eve. It was that a humanoid serpent being had on the mascot of a snake. And was talking to a group of young freshman that was coming into the university, it's a university, university. <laughs> which is going to now cause them to fall off the path. We're going to end there for the day. And so at the end of the day now, in our critical theology, we have to begin to see what the Most High Heavenly One originally intended for us to see. Because if we can't relate to our scriptures, then unfortunately, I might as well let you know, you ain't really going to accept the scriptures for what they are. All you're going to say is, well, this is old scriptures. All you're going to say is, well, we're supposed to accept them because our parents accepted them, because our grandparents accepted them, because our great-grandparents accepted them. But it, it's not going to be doing anything for you. At the end of the day, you're not going to look to it for any type of sustenance. You're not going to look to it for any type of salvation. But when you hold up the original books of the Bible, this is my Bible. So when they start talking about what you ain't in their Bible, you talk about your Bible. Well, I don't know about you, but my Bible is a little bit more thorough than that. Because yeah. that Genesis 3 verse 1 in here, little weak. <laughs> I want I got my Bible. You got your Bible? I got my, got my Bible. Bible. Who got their Bible? Who got your Bible? Bible. You got your Bible? Hold up your Bible. No, this is my Bible. Say, this is my Bible. My Bible. That's what this is. You understand what I'm saying? These are the records of the Guardian Angelic Host. 
These are the records that have been brought to us in this day and time by Bar Sesh, that sits in the seat of Gabriel, that is now, it is now necessary for us to receive a portion of the Shubaka stone, which is known as the what? The Tuareg, but it's a Tuareg. Because we call the Torah or the Tanakh, in order to revolutionize us as a people, because so much of our information has been skewed, been watered down, been bleached, been mistranslated, to the point where we don't even recognize the true realities in the scriptures, and therefore we don't stand up to know that we are the true priests and priestesses of the original books of the Bible, of the planet, whereby those who make up scriptures can now come into our lands, come into our homes, come into our schools, and begin to tell us that they are the authority on the original scriptures when they only have a made up, watered down version of it, and they're gonna tell us that we are supposed to convert to these scriptures when we are the teachers and the actual people that they're teaching us about in the scriptures, and therefore the time has come for that to end. Time for it to end. Time for it to end. You will now see the scriptures through African eyes. You will now revisit Genesis. You will now revisit Exodus. You will now revisit Leviticus, etc., etc., etc. The Istanbul. We're revisiting it. We're not asking for permission. We're actually just going to do it. And we're going to tell people, as we've been telling them, that we are the original tribes, three groups of 12 tribes, known as who? The Israelites. The Israelites. And the that we say Amun, Amun, the master. Amun, Amun, Amun.